Hi, I'm Dan at VintageVelo.org and today we are riding a Vintage Look TVT in the classic Lavi Claire colours um, of the French professional racing team uh, from that time. Now, um, this is the first carbon fibre bike to win at the Tour de France. An iconic frame, um, look really pioneered top end. Um, carbon fiber bikes. They weren't the first though. Um, the carbon fiber had been around for a fair bit of time before that. They were the first to achieve really major success uh, with carbon fiber. And it's not a monocoque in the way that we think of carbon fiber today. Uh, these are individual tubes that are then bonded into aluminium lugs. And of note, because this is an early TVT, um, it's also got Vitus aluminium forks on it. Year or two down the line, um, look, developed their own carbon fiber fork, and then that went on there on the later models. Um, this one here, um, the group set we've got on here, full C record Campagnolo um, as uh, ridden and the spec uh, at the 1980, 1986 Tour de France um, and on this one we've got a, a 53 by 42 uh, up front on the crank set uh, and on the cassette uh, we've got 13 by 26 so it should be nice and rideable. Um, obviously uh, C record rear and front derailleur, really really great, love those a lot. Um, I have gone with a seven speed friction shifter on this one. It's Campagnolo's first attempt uh, at friction shifting. To be fair, not a patch on the Shimano Dura Ace uh, seven speed uh, friction, sorry, um, index shifter of the time. Um, but um, it's still much better than kind of guessing where you are on your gears, or at least for me, it's better. Uh, the wheels on these are 26 spoke uh, Ambrosio Metamorphosis. Uh, again, period correct for the Lavi Claire racing team um, and a really nice wheel to be fair. Giro tyres on there. Um, I would probably prefer to have Veloflex um, but um, they're, they're good, they're new so they're on there for the time being. Uh, up front uh, we've got a Cinelli um, 3T uh, bar and stem combo. I think the stem is 120mm so fits me nicely and at the back uh, the um, perfect uh, for the time the San Marco Rolls saddle. Uh, really nice. Um, the brakes of note on these are Cobaltos. So anyone familiar um, or not familiar with Campagnolo brakes, um, at the time they introduced the C record uh, into the lineup, um, they also introduced Delta brakes. Now, Delta brakes are the most beautiful braking system ever developed uh, for bikes. Unfortunately, they um, they just didn't work very well. Uh, they were so bad that after two years, um, they were withdrawn from sale uh, by Campagnolo and temporarily they released the Cobalto brake to cover uh, the gap uh, in their product lineup. Um, two years down the line, um, after that, they re uh, brought them out and they pretty much sorted them out. By the fifth it itineration of uh, Deltas, they were really quite good, but the damage uh, to their reputation had been done. They were viewed as very expensive, complicated, difficult to set up, uh, and still a bit tricky. Um, and by then, dual pivot had started coming out and they were much, much better. So that was sadly the end of um, Delta brakes. I do have a bike with some of those on. We'll have a look at those uh, at some point, but not today. Today is a beautiful day. Let's get out there and ride. Okay, so today, I've come to the spiritual homeland of five-time French Tour de France winner, the epic Bleuot Bernard Ido. Uh, I'm here in the foothills uh, of southern Brittany. Uh, the roads are fantastic. Stunning day and a really good day to take this Look DVT uh, out for a blast. Uh, now, first impression straight away, um, the frame, uh, let me tell you about the frame. Um, so obviously as we know, um, it's a mandrel spun carbon fiber rod set, which is then uh, bonded into the lugs with an aluminium fork. Um, the feel of this, um, it's, it's hard to uh, describe because it's not like a modern carbon frame bike. Um, it hasn't quite got that super lightweight urge um, that you get the speed and power transfer, but what you do get is like a really, really nice top end steel frame, really comfortable, very nice to ride, very sure footed. But if you're familiar with carbon fiber, it does have just the start of that urge for power for when you go uphill, for when that road goes up, 
it's just got a different feel to steel. You can definitely sense that it's putting more power through the cranks, and slightly less wastage. I wouldn't describe this as super stiff. Um, certainly, uh, I've ridden the, the last version of this bike, um, the uh, Look 595, uh, which is from 2010. Looks fine, all carbon fiber uh, into uh, lug bonded. Uh, very similar to how Colnago still make the C series at the moment. Uh, but that was their last hurrah at that frame construction method. And uh, that is savagely stiff. This is nothing like that. This is smooth, buttery, but with great power transfer. Uh, really nice. You could definitely eat up some serious coals and Tour de France riding. Oh, and some cobbles, which we're just going over now. Yeah, you can go do some cobbles as well, uh, if you like. So I'm sure we're all familiar with the Voluminati wall book of cycling. A uh, kind of tongue in cheek, fun list of rules to help you ride and figure out what to do. Um, now, for me, there are only really two rules in cycling. The first is get back in one piece, and the second is do that in style. Uh, and uh, for sure, this Labby Claire race kit uh, period for the time is fantastically cool, uh, iconic to this day. Uh, the Mondrian inspired scheme um, is just superb even down to the Oakley shades, super cool. Um, everything uh, right, bang up to date and looks great even today. Also off note, gonna go down there. Aside from the cool shoes, um, you've got the Look clipless pedal. 1986 was the year that Look uh, basically developed their ski bindings uh, into what we now know and recognize as the clipless pedal. Uh, before that, it's all toe straps and horrible things like that. Um, Ginelli had got a clipless kind of pedal at the time, um, but that was something you had to reach down and actually press a button to get your foot out off. <laughs> like super dangerous. Uh, so we have look to thank for the brilliant bindings that we have now for our feet. Okay, we're starting to climb a bit now. And uh, I think it's gonna force me out of the saddle for a little. So to understand the iconic status of the Lavie Claire team uh, and the look TVT and its role it played in the 1986 Tour de France, you've got to go back to 1985 uh, with Lavie Claire. They were still riding steel frames at that point, but it really came down to um, Bernardino Leblero the Badger, at that point four-time Tour de France winner. And uh, he was in imperious form in 1985, set up for his fifth tour win. Um, he was comfortably beating everyone. His only rival near rival was Greg Lamont, who was riding in second, but was his teammate. Uh, so technically, no risk there. And all was going great, till a handful of stages before the end. Bang! You know, hits the floor in a big crash, 300 meters from a uh, stage finish lands heavily, straight on his face, broken nose, eye sockets damaged, all sorts. Took him half an hour to get across the finishing line. He was within one kilometer of the end, so that time difference doesn't make any difference, uh, but he was in a bad, bad way. And he still had several mountain climbs still to come uh, at the 85 Tour. And the only way he was gonna get up there, a bit like this one, uh, was to have to be shepherded the whole way by someone brilliant of the likes of Greg Lamont, the only guy who could do it, who was on his team. Now the thing is, if Lamont had put in an attack, Lamont would have won. He had taken enough time, he would have won his first Tour de France, limiting in all to four wins instead of five. But a deal was done, guaranteed, no attacks, you help. A few lies were told, but Inno and uh, Bernard Tappy, the team manager, 
so the team owner gave their assurances to Le Mans that next year at the 86 Tour Inno would be there riding for him they all knew Le Mans saved Inno's fifth tour roll on a year and they're back same team you've still got Bernard Inno you've still got Greg Le Mans Bernard Tappy the famous French billionaire industrialist is still the team owner and Paul Cockley the Swiss director sportif is still as bizarre as ever but the deal is still in place and Greg is in great form Inno suspiciously is also in great form and in an early press conference Inno says ah oh, we don't have a team leader we'll decide that on the road much to Le Mans dismay and then for the next 16 stages Inno does everything he can and I mean everything to win the tour he attacks Greg at every opportunity passing it off as I was following an attack by so and so oh Zimmerman was a risk I had to go with him uh, but taking every opportunity to leave Greg behind and take time himself obviously Le Mans was dismayed he almost walked out Tappy behind the scenes he's assuring everyone that it's all okay basically playing off both parties and lying and then you know, you've got to be honest you know still to this day denies that he was trying to win the tour but he definitely was he even had a phone call from the French president um, who uh, basically said mon ami pas d'américain pour les glories de France which roughly translates into crikey old chap for the glory of France and what's he know to do he's won four tours he's in great form he could win his fifth you've got the French president telling you to win the fifth you've got the billionaire industrialist Bernard Tappy telling you to win the fifth so you go out and try and win the fifth unfortunately uh, just a few stages from the end it's quite apparent Le Monde has got him in the mountains um, Le Monde is chipping away at the time lead and uh, eventually I think it was stage 18 Inno knows the game's up but Inno Le Blero, the Badger is always the fighter he's not going down easy he goes on a crazy suicide attack early on on the uh, Queen stage of the 86 Tour he gets away he takes a couple of mounted passes in the lead but Le Mans Hamston a few of the others they're not panicking Miller's there as well and sure enough they know he knows weak you know blows completely before the last climb and uh, you know and the others breach him in the valley four move ahead and then go on and Le Mans takes the yellow which he would then take uh, to the uh, podium on the Champs-Élysées 1986 although still even after that even after Le Mans in yellow you know still didn't give up telling the media the race wasn't over and poor Le Mans Le Mans was just a guy who loved racing bikes um, he knew his strategy he knew what he could do but he just wasn't he didn't have that punch that uh, Bernardino had and uh, it was epic uh, as we know you know had always said he was going to retire at age 32 that was it age 32 he retires he's out and Le Mans being fantastic goes on to dominate cycling for the next five years winning a host of tour de no actually he doesn't a few months after his 86 tour win he goes out turkey shooting and gets blasted in the back near point blank range by his brother-in-law with a 12 gauge and uh, he is moments away from death literally saved only by the fact an air ambulance that hadn't been called out to him which happened to be in the area uh, flew down saw the commotion grabbed him and got him to the emergency room in double quick time or else Le Mans would have died now fascinating for Le Mans he carries on he claws his way back takes him two years to get back to any sort of fitness and 
Man, he's not good. In the 1989 Giro d'Italia, he wants to quit, he wants to give up. As far as he's concerned, it's all over. But his wife, Kathy, can't underestimate her role in this. She's on him the whole time. She's supporting him. She's saying, get to the end of the race. Get to the end of the race. See what happens. And on second to last stage at the 89 Giro time trial, Le Mans nails it. I think he was either second or fourth. Position uh, escapes me at the moment because I'm climbing and I'm only just breathing. Anyway, he comes away from that thinking, hey, maybe I can do it. And uh, he then walks up at the 89 Tour and he is up against another legend uh, of the Tour de France, uh, the Frenchman Laurent Fignon, himself coming back from various injuries after two Tour wins. Uh, and his director sportif, one of the greatest French director sportif, Cyril Guimard, who used to be Greg's director sportif, takes uh, Fignon to one side and says, the man we have to watch is Le Monde. I saw him at the Giro at that time trial. He's coming back. We have to watch Le Monde. Obviously, um, he laughs in his face. He's like, oh, come on. The guy's been shot in the back. He's still got lead in his heart lining. You know, this guy isn't a competitor. But uh, uh, Guimard is insistent. It's Le Monde is the man to watch. And sure enough, uh, for the next 21 stages, Le Mans and the Frenchman go head to head, battling out the jerseys, changing hands, backwards, forwards. Now Le Mans at that point is signed with the really bad, to be fair, sprinters team of ADR. Uh, he's not really getting paid, he's wondering where his money is. Um, and uh, and it, it's a, basically a, a low level sprinters team with effectively at that point, a top flight climbing GC contender. So they're not set up to look after him at all. And him, so obviously Le Mans and Fignon, Trey blows time and time again. Fignon finally gets away in the Alps, puts one and a half minutes into Le Mans, which looks like, you know, job done, it's all over. But that year, the final stage of the 89 Tour, it's on the Champs Elysees but it's a time trial, an individual time trial, not a, a bunch race. So it can still be won. And Fignon kind of makes a mistake on uh, the stage before. He goes up to Le Mans, congratulates him for a great race and for coming uh, second. You know, he couldn't believe he'd done it. And uh, Le Mans goes away thinking, hang on a moment, this race isn't over. I can still win this. So he goes out there, stage 21, 89 tour. Uh, famously, he's got aero bars and a time trial helmet, uh, but he doesn't have disc wheels. Obviously this is the infancy of aerodynamics. Uh, and Fignon later claims, oh, maybe that shouldn't have been allowed, but let's not overlook, Fignon's got two disc wheels on. So Fignon's always definitely aware of aerodynamics, just got it wrong but that was the infancy of the time. And Le Mans wasn't the first. 7-Eleven had used these tri bars before and Le Mans had seen them, Fignon had seen them, so could have done it. But in that last time trial, they go out there and Le Mans, some famous footage, you want to watch it on YouTube. That time ticks by and as Fignon's approaching the timeline, it's apparent that he's lost the tour by a whole eight seconds. So in 21 days of stage racing, the only thing that sets them apart is an eight seconds at the end of a time trial, rolling down the Champs Elysees. Le Mans then the year after gets a proper team, uh, goes on, uh, wins the 90 tour, and then it starts to decline rapidly. And it's not really that Le Mans is declining. He knows he's good. And funny enough, it's the same for Fignon. Fignon knows he's good. They're both only in their early 30s, they're not past it. But suddenly, the peloton is going faster and faster. And it's hard just to keep up with the peloton. They can't figure it out. 
then they find out what's going on and you've got the scourge of the start of the EPO era and both you know sorry both Le Mans and Fignol weigh it up and go no we're having no part of this and they both retire early uh, leaving the bun fight to follow of the arms race of the drug era to like and subscribe for more vintage bike building, riding and reviews. Thanks a lot.